Welcome to Political Beatdown. I'm Ben Mycel. It's joined by the one and only Michael Cohen. Buckle up, folks, because a new criminal indictment against <laughs> Donald Trump for his criminal conduct relating to the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection is imminent. And when I mean imminent, we could be hearing about breaking news about an indictment brought by special counsel Jack Smith any moment now while we are live. We are on indictment watch from what we hear from reporters at the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. And this was an interesting to note. The foreperson of the grand jury who would normally need to sign the final charging documents remained in the courthouse as the rest of the grand jurors left. That was an indication that something imminent may be up. And so we are following this. This could happen at any moment now. Also, what happened earlier today, Donald Trump's political action committee filings were released. Over $40 million was spent by Trump's Save America PAC. It does the opposite of what it's called because that's the Orwellian nature of MAGA Republicans. But that PAC spent over $40 million in Donald Trump legal bills and legal bills for Donald Trump's witnesses uh, or witnesses who are being called by special counsel Jack Smith and the various prosecutors. Heck, they paid for Giuliani's electronic discovery vendor. They paid for Jason Miller's child support case. $108,000 for Melania's hair. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We will break that down and go through the filing there. The ultimate, ultimate grift. Also, MAGA Republican Michigan Attorney General candidate Matt DiPerno and ex-state representative Dare Rendon were indicted in Michigan just moments ago on criminal charges relating to their tampering with voting equipment. There was a special counsel appointed on that one because at the time of the special counsel investigation, this MAGA Republican candidate DiPerno was running for office. Also, Donald Trump over the weekend gave a speech in Erie, Pennsylvania. It was in Erie eerie and ominous speech indeed, but but before a very small crowd there, Trump saying that he's being indicted for the cult or the cult is being indicted for him. It made no sense, but we'll break it all down. But Cohen, any moment now while we're live, that well, news can come, a historic indictment. Your thoughts? Well, historic, wasn't it historic after Alvin Briggs' first indictment or the second indictment? He's just racking them up the same way you racked up like trading cards when you were a child. Uh, I mean, it's it's nonsensical at this point. Uh, three and soon to be four and then five. I mean, five indictments, twice impeached one term sexual assault accused i mean and yet the guy is still leading the gop i mean that's really that really has to say a lot right now about the gop but ben if i can i really want to spend a few moments with you on the release of the save america pack because the second that that was released i started to go through it and look you're a lawyer i was a lawyer I understand these billables. I really do. And it didn't make any sense to me. So that $40 million, according to the Trump filings, is for the first six months of 2023. Okay. So here in New York, let's say the average attorney is receiving $1,000 per hour for his, ser his or her service. That's 40,000 hours that have been billed, right? Think about this, Ben, 40,000 billable hours. And then go ahead and divide that by half a year, say 182 and a half days. You're talking about a burn rate of around $220,000 a day. Well, how many people are they actually representing here? I can assure you that not one dollar was spent on any of these maggots that ended up storming the Capitol. So where is this money going? Who is it being spent on? Okay, great. Jason Miller, he, first of all, he should be held 
I mean, he should be held in contempt for failing to pay on child support. But that's a whole nother story. And how does that even relate to the campaign? If you were a Republican, if you are a Republican donor to Donald Trump's Save America PAC, are you really donating your money for Donald to then give it to Jason Miller to pay for his refusal to be responsible for his own child in a custody scenario or in a probate scenario? Really? That's where you want your money to go to? I don't get it. But $220,000 a day. I'm sorry. I don't fucking buy it. I just don't buy it. Something here is wrong. Well, look, let's pull it up and we'll show the filing. This is just the page of the filing where the payment of one hundred and eight thousand uh, dollars for Melania can be found. But when you look through it, you see all of the law firms that are listed. And by the way, this is just one page. So look, what is highlighted there, I think, thanks to the good reporting of Rob Pryor's here, you see Herve Pierre Braliard, uh, and that's listed as consulting. That's the person who does Melania's hair. So one hundred and eight thousand dollars for Melania's hair right there. But Look at this list of groups that are being. Wait, wait, she paid does like, have she does have nice hair. I mean, is, let's is, not uh, let's not get let's not get. Right, crazy. Well, I, I won't. Blow, I'm not going to get caught up there. But look, as as, as 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 you look at it, take a look here. You've got Silverman, Thompson, Slutkin, and White LLC. This law firm is being paid at the top of this uh, financial statement about two point one million dollars. Then you got Christopher Kais, the lawyer who is representing him in the Southern District of Florida. Um, that's $2.1 million right there. Uh, Joe Takapina for representing him. Oh, yeah. How much did they give Taco Penis? Uh, a lot of money. Takapina got almost $2 million. $1.7 million for losing the case representing Donald Trump in E. Jean Carroll. Just think about that bill right there. Takapina, $1.7 million. Guess how much Alina Haba's firm made? Alina Haba made $1.5 million. The worst lawyer in probably like the history of America made $1.5 million. Then you go to the Banal Law Group. You see Banal Law Group. I just mm -hmm. did a video on this guy, Jared Roberts, the second year associate. He just filed that ridiculous, frivolous motion to reopen the case where Donald Trump and Alina Haba were sanctioned almost $1 million for, where they sued Hillary Clinton and 30 other individuals. They were sanctioned about $1 million. I wonder if the payment to the banal, I don't know. I wonder if the banal law group payment included a pass-through of the sanctions that's then being, I don't know, because they did, what has the banal law group done other than I just saw the motion that banal law group filed to reopen the case? in the Southern District of Florida before Judge Donald Middlebrooks that Trump was already sanctioned nearly a million dollars for. And they said it was based on the Durham report. They said the Durham report has made a seismic shift. The Durham report that was discredited where Durham went 0 for 2 in his prosecutions. Yeah. But as you go through this list of, you know, on these law firms, I mean, Trump is paying through this PAC these law firms that have nothing to do with representing him in connection with the election or any of the things that he used to raise money in the first place for the PAC, millions and millions of dollars. And I'll throw it back to you in one moment, Cohen, but like we know that all of his co-defendants have lawyers who the PAC is paying for, right? Like Walt Nauta and uh, Carlos de Oliveira. Okay, but de so Oliveira. far with so far with Walt Nada and so far with um with de Oliveira and I don't know if Tavares is going to be covered or not. First of all, there's insurance on that, uh, right? For employees uh, for errors and omission. Uh, so I'm not 100 percent sure that it should be coming from this pack anyway, but. To me, again, something just seems wrong. There is not $220,000 a day as a burn rate. There, I don't care what anybody says. Walt Nada's lawyers have done nothing so far other than file an appearance. So how much could they have possibly charged? I mean, this, this whole thing is so fugazi to me that you see the Save America PAC has already asked a sister PAC that they gave like $60 million to, they asked them for the money back 
because they're going to need it in order to pay for legal fees. Now, again, this has to this has to smack you in the face as absurd that a man who is leading the GOP that is most likely going to be the presumptive nominee for the GOP is so buried into legalities um, that and to legal issues that I don't know how he'll even be able to concentrate on traveling from place to place if he's even allowed. I mean, you know, there's a possibility that he may not be able to travel from state to state without getting some sort of court authorization. I mean, this thing really goes so far because we have never in our entire history, in the entire history of the United States, we have never, ever experienced anything like this. And God willing, we never experience it again. Michael Cohen, I have some important breaking news. It could be the breaking news that we're waiting for. Donald Trump has just posted on his social media platform the following. I hear that deranged Jack Smith, in order to interfere with the presidential election of 2024, will be putting out yet another fake indictment of your favorite president, me, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Why didn't they do this 2.5 years ago? Why did they wait so long? Because they wanted to put it right in the middle of my campaign prosecutorial misconduct. And Cohen, in the event this indictment does break during this live show, you and I are going to call into the show a number of our top legal panelists as well. And we will turn these, this political beatdown into the breaking news where we're going to get uh, some commentary from the top you, legal you know, advisors. Ben, and of course, one of the things company. I also want our brigaders and something we'll obviously speak to the panel about I want everybody to go back and to reflect on every single time, not once, not twice, but every time that there is an issue that Donald feels is wrong towards him because you're calling him out on accountability. What does he do? He plays the victim. He's always the victim, right? All of a sudden, again, deranged Jack Smith. What's deranged about Jack Smith? Serious, what's deranged about Jack Smith? That he's interviewing people like this guy Tavares, who no doubtably told him the entire story about Tavares and De Oliveira going into this audio room and talking about deleting the server from the videotapes, right? And, and the expression that the boss wants this taken care of, that the boss wants these videotapes deleted. How many days does it sit on the local server? I mean, you know, that makes Jack Smith deranged because he's holding Donald and others accountable for their dirty deeds. Listen, you know, I'm not sitting here and I'm not crying over my station in life. But I ended up going to prison, not because of tax evasion. Again, if you read my book, Revenge, you'll know there was no tax evasion. I was a first-time tax offender. And it's something that I'm going to be putting into papers uh, that I expect to serve upon the president right now, You know, Joe Biden, asking for a pardon. I never committed tax evasion and a tax omission. Sure, my accountant fucked up. It happened. And I paid it before even sentencing, including all of the crazy penalties and fines and everything else. But I ended up going to prison because Donald Trump got his mushroom pecker pulled by a porn star. Plain and simple. That's what it was really all about. It was both sides. The Republicans didn't want Trump and not the, to the Democrats. And I ended up getting stuck in between, you know, the middle here. Well, OK, we know what happened. Donald is one individual that will never, ever, ever accept responsibility or accountability. And what is Jack Smith doing? He's holding his feet to the fire on accountability. And does that make him again deranged? The answer is no. And every time Donald says this, you know what? You know what Jack Smith and the rest of the prosecutors are thinking? Yeah, OK, great. Very soon, we're going to make a motion to gag the guy again, because what he's doing is he's witness tampering, he's obstructing of justice, and, you know, and he's basically creating a circus 
in a case where he's a defendant. Not like in the case where he sued me for $500 million. Another frivolous you know, claim that, by the way, we got the date, September 6th. Donald Trump is going to be deposed on September 6th in this frivolous $500 million lawsuit. My only hope is that we are not gagged on that videotape and parts or all of it can be released you know, to the public because me, I am a firm believer in transparency. And that's not something that we're getting a lot of out of government today or definitively under the Trump administration. Well, it's bizarre um, that he would be allowed to have confidentiality because he sued you. He put all of these fraudulent allegations against you in the public and you want to clear your name now. So he's the one who made these facts public in the first place. It tells you everything you need to know that he's going to want to put that subject to a protective order so that it remains quiet and confidential. But that's big news. Cohen, did you say September 6th? September 6th in Miami, Florida, deposition of Donald J. Trump. And look, my friends, if you had an opportunity, and I'm sure all the brigaders did, to see that disaster of a deposition in the E. Jean Carroll case by Robbie Kaplan, um, you could only imagine what my counsel, Danya Perry and Benjamin Brodsky, are going to be doing to Donald because... <sighs> There is no way for him to answer the questions that we are in the process of preparing, even as we speak. I mean, you know, it's not going to be going in and winging it. This is going to be a very deliberate and carefully orchestrated deposition of Donald. And I'm not even sure. I mean, you know, it, being that this isn't criminal, can he take the fifth on, you know, on everything other than his name? Well, if he does that, it certainly doesn't help his case. Remember, as the plaintiff, it is he who is obligated to push the case forward. And I just want to remind everyone, thank goodness for the judge who demanded that it be within 45 days of the hearing. Otherwise, Donald wanted it 90 days after the election which is another 16 months. Joe. That is big breaking news here that Michael Cohen just announced. This has not been released anywhere else. The deposition date of Donald Trump in the federal case filed by Trump against Michael Cohen in the Southern District of Florida, Miami Division. That deposition will be taking place September 6th. Michael Cohen has asked and wants to make sure that as much of that deposition can be public as possible. We will keep all the brigaders up to date as we learn more about it. And you'll hear it directly from the source himself. So as we're on indictment watch, which we can learn about a potential press conference from special counsel jack smith any moment now donald trump for those just joining just posted that he expects to be indicted at 5 p.m eastern that's 10 minutes away here's what donald trump just posted i hear that deranged jack smith in order to interfere with the presidential election of 2024 will be putting out yet another fake indictment of your former president me at 5 p.m eastern why didn't they do this 2.5 years ago why did they wait so long because they wanted to put it right in the middle of my campaign, prosecutorial misconduct. As we see the legal defense bills of Donald Trump totaling $56 million and just $40 million or $40 million, not just $40 million in just the last six months. It is clear that Donald Trump's entire campaign is actually not running for the presidency. It's basically trying to run from being put into prison for all of his crimes. And he's using the campaign to pay his legal defense bills because let's face it, he is as cheap as can be and he doesn't want to use his own money. If he claims to be a billionaire, he should be paying for this himself. And just look at what he is doing during these I guess, campaign events, which are like traveling fascist circuses at this point. Like this is what happened over the weekend in Erie, Pennsylvania. And Donald Trump's not talking about like, here's what I'm going to do for America. Here's what I'm going to do for the people. It's like 90 minutes of him on stage whining and complaining and me they're coming after me derange this derange this. Here's a clip from over the weekend, actually a very small rally a small event in erie pennsylvania the stadium was only a small stadium about 75 percent full 
Um, it was more of like a convention sta stadium center also, not like a real stadium. But let's play this clip of uh, Donald Trump and give you a sense of what he's saying, just whining about the corrupt Marxists. They're coming after me 2.5 years. Here, play this clip. The people. So why didn't the corrupt Marxist prosecutors bring these radical and unjustified charges against me two and a half years ago? They had two and a half years. Two and a half years. Nobody even knew they were looking at it. I don't, I don't think they were. But they waited two and a half, almost three years, so that they could bring them right in the middle of my presidential election, because it's election interference. These are crooked people. Now... Here's the next clip I want to show you. This is Trump calling special counsel Jack Smith a deranged lunatic. Play this clip. The crooked people. Now, this deranged lunatic named Jack Smith, who's been overturned unanimously by the Supreme Court, he's tried to destroy many lives. You ever see the picture of the guy? It's like central casting. Deranged Jack Smith and the DOJ will probably bring another case along with the DA. We have a racist DA and crime-ridden Atlanta. Atlanta, I loved Atlanta. I loved Atlanta, like Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia. But it's the worst per capita crime city in the hall. Here he is saying did, that. Did you imagine? I mean, can we just break that down, Ben, for a quick second? Now, all of a sudden, Fonnie Willis, the DA of Georgia and Fulton County, is a racist? Why? Show me one piece of evidence that Donald Trump is predicating the basis of racism on. Because I could show you at least a dozen, if not two dozen or five dozen, of racist statements by Donald Trump, whether it's about Alvin Bragg, whether it's about Kamala Harris, whether it's about uh, Fonnie Willis, right? I mean, how many, you know, how many openly racist comments? Has Donald Trump made what name one that funny Willis has made? I mean, it is comical. Did you know what we've been talking about, Ben, since we started this political beatdown when it comes to Donald? It's all about deflection. You see, Donald knows exactly who and what he is, and he knows what people are calling him. So in order to avoid being called the racist, instead, what is he doing? He's calling Fannie Willis a racist. What I love the most is even in this $500 million lawsuit, this frivolous action that he brought against me, he's claiming in it that I have damaged his reputation. No, what damages your reputation is going there in places like Erie, Pennsylvania, and saying stupid shit to a group of people who are basically a bunch of, you know, want to be carnival barkers just like Donald. That's the problem. I mean, hey, Salty, I know that you and I were speaking about, uh, you know, what some of these folks were doing before Donald came out. If you have that clip, love for you to play it because this is exactly who the people are that are attending these Trump rallies. They are dangerous. They are so dangerous to our democracy. And again, I am stunned that more people are not, you know, stepping away from Donald at this time. Couldn't agree more with you there. And here's a clip of Donald Trump saying, they're not indicting me, they're indicting you. Let's play this clip. They want to try and demean and hurt us, all of us. You know, they're not indicting me, they're indicting you. I just happen to be standing in their way. That's all it is. And by the way, he can't even keep that like propaganda straight because here's another clip of him saying that I'm being indicted for you. He, first he goes, I'm in, I'm there indicting you for me. And then like five minutes later, he goes, you know what? I'm actually, I'm being indicted for you. Let, let's pull up that clip if, if we've got it. Smart people they're they know what they're doing. We have, they're at the top of their game. We have somebody that's not at the top of his game, never was at the top of a game. Never was. We have a guy who's a dumb son of a bitch. And to allow this to happen. It's the wrong clip right there. But I want to show the other clip. That's him calling President Biden a dumb SOB, just using very vulgar language. Let's play the next clip, though. By the Salty, way, that's where... nothing compared to what he used to say about Barack Obama. 
I mean, you know, again, it goes right back. It goes right back to what I just said. You know, Donald Trump is a racist, plain and simple. And so what is he going to do? Again, he's going to say it to Fannie Willis. He's going to say it to Alvin Bragg. He's going to say about Kamala Harris and so many others. And what do they all have in common? What's the denominator here? That they're black. So all of a sudden, it's like he needs to deflect the whole racist thing. And really, what is he doing here? You know, again, with Donald, you have to always think, what is he trying to, what's he trying to get? What message is he trying to get across? Not to you, Ben, not to our brigaders, but rather to his MAGA base, that this is reverse discrimination, that this is black individuals in authority going after Donald because of his color, because he's white and because he's standing up for all of these others, you know, who are, you know, solely interested in white privilege. That's really what he's doing here. Look, we've got our timer counting down until (laughs) five Eastern where Donald Trump says that is the moment he will be indicted for his criminal conduct relating to the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection. From a lot of our sources, we are hearing that reporters are gathering at the courthouse in Washington, D.C. We do expect that at any moment, I mean, it's possible that this thing can get delayed, so I don't want to overhype it, but what we are hearing is that it is very possible in the next few minutes we will be learning that Donald Trump has been indicted again by special counsel Jack Smith, this in connection with his conduct relating to the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection. Want to tell everybody as well, a big announcement we made last night on the Midas Touch podcast. The Midas Touch Network just launched a new website. You go to MidasTouch.com. We've got a ton of great content there. It complements what we are doing on YouTube. I think it is going to become one of the largest pro-democracy destinations of all media websites. What we built here on YouTube, we are going to build a complement at MidasTouch.com. Make that your homepage. Check back every few hours for the news stories because that site is looking great. We've got some great contributors, a great editor-in-chief, and that's MidasTouch.com. Let's take a quick break as the countdown goes down. 55, 54, 53. Play the ad. Heart health and staying healthy, especially when you have a family that you want to be able to spend as much time with as possible, is so, so important. We all have a heartfelt reason to support our blood pressure. In fact, more than half of the U.S. population would benefit from blood pressure support. Super Beats Heart Shoes are an easy and convenient way to support healthy blood pressure, and they promote heart-healthy energy. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the energy antioxidants in super beets are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone and with over 30,000 five-star reviews and counting super beets heart shoes are having their moment super beets heart shoes are incredibly delicious and so much better than any alternative supplements out there i take my super beet heart shoes each morning and it's really kick-started my morning routine after taking my super beets heart shoes I feel like I have more energy and I'm ready to take on the day. Super Beats Heart Shoes are effective and clinically studied. They are the number one pharmacist recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. It's blood pressure support you can trust. Double your potential with Super Beats Heart Shoes. Get a free 30-day supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes and 15% off your first order by going to GetSuperBeats.com and use the promo code BEAT, B-E-A-T, okay? That's GetSuperBeats.com and you spell it super, then B-E-E-T-S.com and then use the code BEAT like beatdown, B-E-A-T. Double your potential with Super Beats Heart Shoes. Get a free 30-day supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes and 15% off your first order by going to GetSuperBeats.com and use the promo code BEAT. That's B-E-A-T and go to GetSuperBeats.com. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Fume. 
Cold turkey, it may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your wacky neighbor or some sketchy message board. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Now, not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. The first time I used fume, I was shocked at how flavorful and fresh it tasted. Now, it's easy to hold and perfectly balanced and quite honestly, extremely fun to fidget with. The real wood material and sleek design definitely classes it up, and I feel pretty darn cool holding it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Head to tryfume.com and use code BEAT to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code BEAT to save an additional 10% off your order today. Welcome back, we are live and here we go folks. Here is what we are learning right now. A US Marshal has just arrived to announce that there should be no telephones in the court. This is from Ann Bauer, that is a big announcement. Special Counsel Jack Smith is about to release a statement. We will bring you Special Counsel Jack Smith statement live. When that occurs, um, we're going to pull up that press conference in just a moment, but we expect that Special Counsel Jack Smith in just moments is going to announce that Donald Trump has been indicted again in connection with his conduct relating to the 2020 election, the January 6th insurrection. We will all be watching this together, Brigaders, when this announcement is made. We will be combing through all of the legal documents to bring you what this indictment says. But we told you from the outset to try to, to make sure you buckle up and to get ready for the big news. Michael Cohen, on the eve of this historic announcement, what is going through your mind right now? Well, I'm sad for our country. To be very honest, I'm very sad for our country because we're talking about a former president. I remember when Alvin Bragg's case first came down. That's a case that obviously I'm involved with. And I was saying, I can't believe that there's actually a former president of the United States who was just indicted for a crime. And then all of a sudden, a second one comes down. And I'm saying, holy shit, a two-time indicted former president of the United States, one-termer, and then the sexual assault case comes down. And then I'm saying to myself, you've got to be shitting me. This is almost like a bad episode of House of Cards. You know, if this was on a television show, you would turn around and you would ask what the writers were smoking when they were writing this thing. And now we're going for number three, right? And then soon it'll be Fannie Willis from Georgia, number four, and then January 6th, insurrection, number five. And Donald is still in the race. I mean, this, this is the part that makes me so disappointed in our country that there was there must have been so much latent racism and hatred and you know and animus that it was buried and finally Donald opened up the Pandora's box and let it out. And my biggest fear is that we will not ever be able to put, you know, this evil back into its box. Look at what happened today where there was a guy who wanted to shoot up, you know, a yeshiva. I mean, for God's sakes, this bullshit with the guns and shooting of kids and innocent people. I mean, what are we, what are we doing? I mean, we, we are truly the greatest 
country in the world. We are the greatest experiment, meaning democracy. And for some unknown reason, we want to throw democracy away to autocracy. And if you were going to even consider throwing democracy away to autocracy, which I can't understand why you would, why in the world would you ever think that Donald J. Trump should be the leader? Seriously? An untalented buffoon? who looks like an overblown oompa fucking loompa? This is who you want to be the leader, even of your autocracy? The fuck are we thinking? How sad is this for America? And I'm, and I'm, I'm so saddened. I mean, I, I, I don't even know another way to express. I don't understand what we are doing as a, as a country. There are so many issues that are out there right now that need to be taken care of. And when you start seeing the pandering going on to Donald by a whole slew of individuals on a multitude of issues, I mean, now you know that this is the danger that we are all facing in the upcoming months and years. No doubt about it. And one of the things you mentioned there is like when you think about MAGA, right? It is fascism and authoritarianism, but it's also fascism meets idiocracy. Yeah. And so when you see like, yes, they spent $40 million, the pack on legal defense, but also the worst lawyers, they have nothing to show for the $40 million well, they have losses other than show, right? loss after loss, after right. loss, after loss, you know, and here's one person who made $1.5 million, Alina Haba laughing all the way to the bank. Someone who's responsible for about $1 million in sanctions for filing a frivolous case in the Southern District of Florida. She's now been sidelined as the lawyer. She's now a spokesperson. But here is Trump attorney Alina Haba basically saying, yeah, we took $40 million, but like, who cares? Sorry. Here, play this clip of Alina Haba. There's nothing illegal about this. And when you support the president, you support getting him into office. I think the one thing we can all agree on is they've weaponized the legal system to prevent him from getting into office. So the defense of the same, I don't see as problematic. And I know that legally it's not. And that's really all I'm going to say on that. Um, but if you look at the numbers, I think it's just completely disgusting. But I also invite the public to look at the numbers that the DOJ is spending attacking uh, uh, President no, I, Trump. I, 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 I mean, if, if that's not like straight out of Forrest Gump, that's all I got to say about that. I mean, no, no, that's not all, Alina, that you have to say about that. Come on now. You have a family. This is what you want for your family to become the laughing stock of the world. I mean, spokesperson for Donald Trump. You're not a spokesperson. You're a fucking parrot. That's what you are. And all you're doing is repeating the bullshit that he's spewing. And the more that you do, the more that he's going to allow you to continue to do it. But look at even where you're doing it at. No serious new station or outlet wants to have you on because you make a fool of yourself each and every time that you go on. So you go on Newsmax. Hey, congratulations. It's the same people again and again and again that are watching you. And to be honest with you, that number is diminishing as well. But again, you know, one of the things, Ben, that you brought up is your new, um, you know, your new site at what is it, MidasTouch.com. And I implore all the brigaders to immediately go onto that site, log in, and so on. I'm going to tell you why, because something that I brought up to Ben two days ago when we're beginning to work on it, we're not sure if it's going to be New York, Chicago, California, D.C., but we're going to make our rounds as to where the very first meet is. Um, for all the brigaders, a political beatdown rally. Uh, personally, I'd like to see it in D.C., right? And I'd like to see it somehow by, you know, the White House so that everybody knows how, how strong we are and how, you know, how we, how secure we are in our position that, we are going to go there and we're going to make our presence known, not just to the Republicans, but to the Democrats as well. And we will be out there in force, not just 
let's say September or so when we end up pulling this thing off. But come 2024, when it comes time to get to the voting booth, we know that our brigaders will be there. We know that we will be a part of this gigantic blue tsunami that is just going to drown the GOP, that fake red wave that everybody was expecting. We're going to create a blue tsunami so big that we're going to end up putting this bullshit, this autocracy ideology, just we're going to wipe it right out of our body politic. Yep. The new Midas Touch Network website is MidasTouch.com. And Cohen, as we were talking about hosting this big live event in Washington, D.C., what's so interesting is there have been so many brigaders and members of the Midas Mighty who have reached out and they've been like, hey, let me help plan an event. We all want to do an event. So I know the demand is there. I also know the demand but is you know, there but, to but see. Ben, because, ben, because you know, I don't know how big of a venue that we're going to uh, end up having. Obviously, I would prefer if, and this is, again, something that I wanted to bring to your attention, I would prefer that our brigaders have first shot, right, at um, joining us uh, as we do this rally. So, you know, the place that we're going to uh, have the sign up and please, if you do sign up because you will be taking a spot away from someone else, please make sure that you're there. And if not, obviously, you'll let us know through the same website. But that's going to be the site in order to get your bracelet or your number, uh, because we again, we don't know how many um, the place will seat and hold uh, for the very first event. Well, the demand is there for the event, but I think there's even a significantly greater demand for accountability of Donald Trump. We are learning that special counsel Jack Smith may be giving a press conference at any moment now. We will bring you that press conference live here on Political Beatdown, the moment that is taking place. As you see right here, C-SPAN is just recycling through old interviews right now because uh, the room where the press conference is going to be held is still being set up. We believe this means Donald Trump is going to be indicted again by special counsel Jack Smith in the other case relating to Donald Trump's 2020 conduct relating to the election. Um, we want to just do a quick sound test to make sure that we have our audio, not just... Yes, keep playing it, Salty. Let's make sure we have audio so that we're ready to go. ...and at the end of September. Perfect. Audio is there. Sound check. My dogs were barking. They're ready to go, Michael Cohen. <laughs> Let's pull up this post from Donald Trump right now. Donald Trump said at five he was going to be uh, indicted and an announcement was going to be made. I had the countdown on for five Eastern. This is what Trump posted moments ago. I hear that deranged Jack Smith in order to interfere with the presidential election of 2024 will be putting out yet another fake indictment of your favorite president, me, 5 p.m. Why didn't they do this 2.5 years ago? Why did they wait so long? Because they wanted to put it right in the middle of my campaign, prosecutorial misconduct, just kind of whining, whining, whining. I want to show you this other clip of Alina Haba just to show you how pathetic it is. This as we wait for special counsel Jack Smith's announcement. Um, and here you have Alina Haba saying that Donald Trump would never act like what he's being accused of. He is the most ethical person that I know. Meanwhile, she's getting paid one point five million dollars in the latest uh, disclosure from his PAC. Play this clip. But they would like the American public to believe in these bogus indictments, that there are some facts that say that President Trump was obstructing justice. When he has his turn in court and when we get to file our papers, you will see that every single video, every single surveillance tape that was requested was turned over. If President Trump didn't want something turned over, I assure you, that is something that could have been done, but he never would act like that. Okay, he is well, the most ethical American I know. Let's talk about the indictment because... It should be noted, though, that Yusel Tavares, the head of IT, Donald Trump's own employee, is the one who provided all of this information to special counsel Jack Smith and said that Carlos de Oliveira and Walt Nauta said the boss, Donald Trump, wants the surveillance footage deleted. So let me go in and let me just break this down a little bit for the brigaders so that they fully understand that there's more to this than just what meets the eye, what you have Michael heard. Cohen, let me interrupt you right now. Oh, yes. Now. I'm seeing are. the same thing. 
Here's what we are learning right now. This is being reported by Ann Bauer from Lawfare. I'm just going to report it as we learn about it. An indictment was just handed up before the magistrate judge by Assistant United States Attorney Molly Gaston, the grand jury foreperson connected to the January 6th grand jury, was in court when it was handed up. The indictment will be filed and sealed. We believe this is the indictment that special counsel Jack Smith has just filed that a grand jury has just voted on. The indictment we believe has just been secured just moments ago before person handing it to the judge. This would be another indictment of Donald Trump for engaging in criminal conduct regarding the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection, also potential criminal conduct regarding his political action organizations as well. As soon as this indictment is unsealed, we will bring that to you. But I got chills talking about that, Michael Cohen, sharing this historic moment with you, with the brigaders, and we're going to bring in some legal analysts in just a bit and keep the coverage going. But no better person to get an immediate reaction from than you, Michael Cohen, who has endured years and years of this. What is your immediate reaction to hearing this live on Political Beatdown? Well, again, it goes right back to what I was saying, that I'm saddened for the country. And it's for that reason that, you know, the two finger salute goes to the former president. Fuck you for putting the country through this. Really, fuck you for doing the things that you continue to do day in and day out. Take the responsibility, own it, right? Instead of having your minions come out there, stop attacking people like Jack Smith. The guy, the guy is doing his job. And the fact that you don't like the job that he's doing doesn't mean that he's deranged or corrupt in the Biden, you know, family, you know, and so on. There has not been a single shred of evidence that any one of your people have produced. And remember, the guy who was looking into the Biden scenario happens to be a holdover from the Trump administration. So you got to stop this shit. It is damaging our country. It is making neighbor feud with neighbor. It's making state feud with state. We're allowing the entire country to, you know, to run amok simply so that they can follow into the nonsensical statements of Donald Trump, the Alina Habas, and all of these sycophantic lawyers, right, who think that they're doing good, right? But they're not. What they're doing is they're just regurgitating Donald's bullshit so that they keep the money flowing. Look, one of the things that's crazy is right after Trump made the, again, announcement that he was going to be indicted, that he got the target letter. What goes out? 50 different text messages to everybody, whether it's from his kids, whether it's from staff, whether it's from him, dear Patriot, dear American, you know, dear MAGA. All of a sudden, you know, he's, again, grifting for the money. And he's not grifting for the money in order to defend them. It's, it's where he lies and he just lies to them and say, oh, I'm doing this for you. I'm putting my big ass body in front of the Democrats to protect you. That's not true. All right. In fact, you know, he's only looking out to protect one person and one person only, and that is himself. And you, you fools, are out there doing what? You are paying for his defense of himself. So it's time that we smarten up as a country. And again, it's why how many times in every single one of these uh, episodes on political beatdown, I say to our brigaders, it is essential that we ensure that we are fully registered to vote come 2024, that I cannot wait for us to have this rally together, for all of us to have one unified voice against autocracy in favor Absolutely. of democracy. Let's try to take not just the House and the Senate and the White House, again, fully democratic so that we can actually get things done that benefit all Americans, not just Democrats, all Americans. Want to give the brigaders all the breaking news as we learn about it. We will be learning about it together. Here is what we are learning. First, 
This comes from Josh Gerstein. Breaking, a grand jury just returned an indictment against a defendant who was not identified publicly, even by initials or grand jury number, was put under seal. A prosecutor who handles the January 6th matter criminally investigating Donald Trump before that grand jury, Molly Gaston submitted what is believed to be a Trump indictment. Here is an update. Molly Gaston, this is from Kyle Cheney at Politico. Molly Gaston, a prosecutor detailed to the special counsel, handed up a single sealed indictment and received permission to issue a summons that just happened moments ago. No names or initials provided. Kyle Cheney also reports court is now closed. We may have to wait for Trump to get the summons and hop on his social media platform to learn what happened. This from Jim Acosta at CNN. The federal grand jury hearing evidence in special counsel Jack Smith's investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 election handed up an indictment in the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. And here's the post that Donald Trump made moments ago. Let's pull this up, Salty, what Donald Trump said when we have it. But Donald Trump said that he is expecting to be indicted at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, that is what is coming from uh, Donald Trump's social media platform. So that is all of the information we have. If there is a press conference, there it is right there by Salty pulling it up. I hear Jack Smith is going to indict me at 5 p.m. I'm just going to take away all the other, you know, stupid and idiotic stuff that he writes on that social media post. Want to remind everybody as well about the new Midas Touch website, Midas Touch. Dot com. We're going to be announcing in the coming week some of the top editors, some of the top reporters who are going to be working for MidasTouch.com. And that's all made possible thanks to you, the Brigaders, thanks to the Midas Mighty. Everybody who's contributed memberships to the Midas Touch Network has allowed us to expand MidasTouch.com for all breaking news. It's going to complement what we're doing here on YouTube. Michael Cohen, as we're learning more, and again, we'll break to a press conference, the moment we hear about it, the moment we learn more. But from all indications, the indictment has been handed down against Donald Trump for trying to overthrow the 2020 election. This is a day of accountability. But to your point, Cohen, as well, it is also very, very, very distressing that this even exists and that the Republican Party has done this. Sure, but Ben, one of the bigger problems that's here is this is only one part of the corrupt behavior that occurred during the Trump administration. You know, I talk about my book, Revenge, and I ask everyone to please go to Amazon, buy the book. Why? I want you to understand what revenge is all about. Revenge is Donald Trump weaponizing. And let me say this again, because it's a word that Donald Trump throws out every single day, multiple times a day in posts on television and wherever else any of his acolytes or himself, you know, are in a position to spew it. My book, Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the United States Department of Justice Against His Critics. Do I have to go any further than go back to the term that we talked about, you know, 45 minutes or so ago? Deflection. Donald Trump knew exactly what he was doing when he was when it was his administration. And he believes that he's going to be able to deflect away from his culpability so that, you know, it's now on the Biden administration, despite the fact that the Biden administration is not weaponized. Jack Smith doesn't work for Joe Biden. You know who worked for Donald Trump? Bill Barr. And if you see the most corrupt prosecution against a United States citizen in the history of our country, and why I tell people it is so imperative that you read this book, it is imperative because I don't want to see it happen to another American. This never should have happened to any American. In fact, and I say this often, they made me the very first political prisoner held by my own country because I refused to waive my First Amendment constitutional right. Well, 
What country are we living? This isn't North Korea. This isn't Saudi Arabia. This isn't Russia, like where they jailed Navalny because he's a critic of the of President Putin. This is the United States of America. You have your God-given constitutional rights. Well, not under a Trump administration. And Donald Trump, as I have said over and over and over again, and these indictments are proving it. Donald Trump is the single greatest threat to America's democracy that has ever existed. And we cannot, not for a split second, let our guard down because this cockroach will end up infesting our entire country with the ideology of fascism and autocracy. And we just can't allow it to happen. As we We wait... As we wait for more information about what we believe to have been the new indictment that was just brought against Donald Trump, I will point out that there was another indictment handed down in Michigan where the former MAGA attorney general candidate Matt DiPerno and the ex-state MAGA representative Dare Rendon are now facing criminal charges for their alleged roles in an effort to access Michigan voting machines after the 2020 presidential election. This is being reported by the Detroit News Support Local News. A special prosecutor confirmed in a statement earlier that the continued criminal investigation into the tampering of vote tabulators is ongoing and not over. Quote, the charging decision was the result of a thorough decision-making process by an independent citizen's grand jury. It should not shock you, Michael Cohen, that this was the MAGA Republican candidate. Matt DiPerno was being pushed by Donald Trump, by all of the kind of MAGA leadership, and he was going to then attack all of the people in the pro-democracy community. And so it is a good day for justice there in Michigan. Now all eyes turn to Washington, D.C., as the political beatdown live broadcast right now is one of the top news broadcasts in all of America. That is not Special Counsel Jack Smith on the screen for those confused. That is what C SPAN <laughs> that is what C SPAN is playing right now. But as soon as the press conference occurs, we will take you live. Salty, you want to do one more sound check right there just to make sure that everything sounds perfect. They are employed, but they beautiful salty. Everybody throw those salty emojis. Also, I got a Ben emoji yesterday. Thanks to the Midas Mighty hitting 400 memberships by hitting that dollar sign on the YouTube page. Thank you, everybody, for unlocking the Ben emoji. It was funny. I certainly appreciate it as well. So that's big news coming out from Michigan. You mentioned before we went to break and as we wait for uh, this indictment, you mentioned the cult followers who showed up at this Trump event. And this is what it means to be a modern day Republican. That is so shocking to say, Michael Cohen. These are the people that Donald Trump is grifting off of to pay his legal bills, $1, $5, $10. $10. But <laughs> it's a salty. You got to prepare. <laughs> this topic oh, man. But these are... <laughs> I mean, These are the people that that was genius. But here, I want to show, I want to show you this one. I want to show you this one, Cohen. This is a woman who was at the Trump rally saying that, "Hey, she's proud to be in a she's she's proud to be in a cult." Here, play this, play this, play this clip. Song. I am a huge Trump supporter, and I was just told yesterday that I was part of a cult, and I'm damn proud of it. I am. Not only does he part of us, yeah. he's part of us. He truly is. And the things that they're, they're, the liberals are putting his family through is horrendous. Michael oh, Cohen. yeah. Oh, yes. He's part of you, right? Why don't you invite Donald over for a beer to sit at your, you know, to sit outside of your, of your double wide? I mean, so stupid. Does she not understand that Donald wouldn't cross the street to piss on her if she was on fire? I mean, they they create this image of him like these fake NFTs of Donald as a superhero, as a cowboy, you know, as a, you know, as a special s- secret agent or something like that. I mean, that's not who he is. And the funny thing is none of them know him. Zero. All they hear is when he gets up there 
or when he sends them a text message, I'm protecting you. Really? What they're putting Donald and his family through? What do you think Donald has put me and my family through? What do you think he's going to put you and your family through if God forbid a million times that he somehow manages to recapture the White House? There is a list of thousands, I don't even know how many thousands of people on his hit list, on his enemies list. And he will spend four years, if not more, trying to figure out two things. The first is how to remain president for the rest of his natural life and how to get back at each and every person seriously times 10 that's on that list. That's what this country is going to end up becoming. Michael Cohen, we're going to be joined shortly by Karen Friedman Agnifilo, a co-host of Legal AF. She used to be the number two in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, so she's going to come with incredible insight. We also have Michael Popak, who's going to be joining us soon. This just in, former President Donald Trump has been informed, he has been indicted, by a federal grand jury regarding the special counsel's probe into Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Sources with direct knowledge tell ABC News. Let me repeat that one more time. Former President Trump has been informed just moments ago that he has been indicted by a federal grand jury regarding the special counsel's probe into Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. As we shift to the second hour of this historic broadcast, and we said when we went live, we get good information here. We said it could be happening in minutes when no one else was saying that it was going to be happening in minutes. We have our very, very reliable sources. We will be joined in the second hour by top legal analysts, Michael Popak, Karen Friedman, Agnifilo, and others. But as we hit this second hour of our broadcast, people want to hear from you, Michael Cohen, about this historic news. Donald Trump has been informed. He has been indicted again, this time in Washington, D.C., for his efforts to overthrow our democracy, Cohen. Which, which, by the way, is going to create for a very interesting September 6th um, (laughs) deposition where Donald will be under oath. Of course, it'll be videotaped and transcribed. It's going to make for a very, not just interesting, but a potentially very dangerous deposition for Donald. And, you know, again, thanks to all of you who have donated and helped to bring us to where we're at. Um, I can assure you, you know, the lawyers, Danya Perry and Benjamin Brodsky, are fighting, you know, in order to prevent it from being um, sealed. You know, we believe in transparency. We want transparency. We want the public to be able to see Donald, you know, as he responds to the various questions that are going to be asked, you know, and to basically expose him for the fraudster that he is, the user of our legal system in order to intimidate and retaliate against, again, critics, people that he doesn't like, like me. Now, you know, it's it's crazy. I want to just go back for two seconds and talk about the um, server that was in that alleged small audio room. One of the things that has not been discussed, and you're going to hear it from me first, is that this server is the local server for Mar-a-Lago. Each and every one of the Trump properties has its own you know, server on site. And those servers, of course, uh, is the hub where all of the video um, that comes in gets fed through. But all of that then goes to a program, a mainframe, which is also then simultaneously sent to Trump Tower, where it sits for you know, until they end up deleting it there as well. So just by deleting it at the audio room level would not have gotten rid of the tape. So there is more here than meets the eye. And that, uh, again, you know, that's um, basically controlled by the COO. And and, and Michael Cohen, I want to interrupt right here as more breaking news becomes available. We have the docket right now. Let's pull up the docket in the new case, United States versus Trump. You can see right here that uh, 
The case has been unsealed as to Donald Trump. You see the indictment. Then there's a motion to seal the case that was filed. And here it is, folks. This looks to be the cover page of the new indictment filed in the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, United States of America versus Donald Trump, 18 U.S.C. Section 371, conspiracy to defraud the United States, count to 18 U.S.C. Section 1512K, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, Count three, 18 U.S.C. Section 1512C2, obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. Count four, 18 U.S.C. Section 241, conspiracy against rights. This is coming out from Reuters Legal right here. And again, as we learn more, as we see more, we will make sure that we are posting that right here. Want to mention to everyone as well who's joining us that Cohen has a legal defense fund that uh, we all help put together um, in connection with the frivolous lawsuit filed against him by Donald Trump in the Southern District of Florida, where Trump is seeking $500 million, unlike Donald Trump and how Donald Trump does things. All of the funds here go to Cohen's legal defense in the Southern District of Florida. And big news that Michael Cohen broke earlier in this broadcast that he is seeking Donald Trump's deposition. He is getting Donald Trump's deposition on September 6th in Florida. That's certainly going to be very uh, interesting as well. And we're hearing now from multiple reports, again, more confirmation that Trump was just indicted. We will be bringing this information to you as we learn more uh, here on the Midas Touch Network. We will soon be joined by legal analysts, uh, Karen Friedman Agnifilo and Michael Popak. We're actually joined right now by Karen Friedman Agnifilo. Karen Friedman Agnifilo, co-host of Legal AF. Thanks for joining the political beatdown crossover <laughs> episode that's now become the breaking news. Karen Freeman, I want to get your thoughts on this breaking news. No one better to hear from than you and Cohen as well for, for different reasons, but very important reasons. Karen Friedman, Agnifilo. Hi. So, yeah, I mean, we haven't seen the indictment yet, but, you know, it was always a question about whether this is going to be a sweeping hundred count indictment with multiple, multiple defendants, because after all, there are so many people who were colluding with Donald Trump regarding trying to steal the election. And so we were wondering, is this going to be a big, huge indictment like that? Or is this going to be a more limited, discreet indictment? I've always predicted it's going to be a limited, discreet indictment, just charging Donald Trump, maybe one or two others, you know, kind of along the lines of Walt Nada and um, Carlos de Oliveira. But I think that this is going to be a very limited, small indictment just against him and just a few charges because Jack Smith wants to get this case to trial uh, before the election. And that's the best chance he has at doing that, at keeping it limited and short and small. You don't need a thousand charges, right? That's just more, more charges that you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury. You just need the ones that you can prove limited, clear, streamlined, and there's less motions to make, less defense attorneys who can ask for time and ask for delay. Keep it short, keep it you know small, keep it streamlined, but tell your story. I anticipate this will be a speaking indictment that will have uh, a lot of information in there the way Jack Smith did with Mar-a-Lago, right? He explained what the charges were, what the evidence was, and how it, uh, how it, what kind of information he had really told a story. You don't have to be a lawyer to read the Mar-a-Lago indictment, right? You can understand it just from the way he wrote it. And I anticipate that this indictment is going to be very similar. Uh, the news reporting has been that there are four counts on the indictment, which you know is is along the lines of what uh, what I was just saying that it, they're going to. Keep we it have short, the indictment it, right here, Karen, as well. So there you go. So to, four we, counts. We even have okay. any, you know why why don't oh we go god, over and it's it? one defendant and it's one defendant it's exactly what i just said oh my god okay jack smith see you know jack and smith and i used to work together we were trained together we were trained in the exact same place by the exact same person so that's you know he i would have done exactly what he did one defendant a few charges that's exactly what he did. So great. 18 United States Code Section 371 is conspiracy to defraud the United States. That's two or more people who conspire to defraud the United States. Uh, 
by um, impairing, obstructing, uh, or some other way defeating a governmental function with deceptive practices. You need an overt act. I think that's going to be with respect to the Pence vote, you know, to stop Pence from certifying the election. I think that could be that. Uh, and it also could be the fake slates of electors. I think that could, those two um, could very nicely, those two fact patterns could fit very nicely into Section 371. You know, the standard there is that he knowingly and willfully uh, knew that it was false, uh, that he defrauded the United States. He knew he lost the election. And they're going to say, look, you know, there's more than 60 legal challenges that said that. Bill Barr said that, you know, and uh, it will require an overt act, which means just an act. It doesn't have to be an illegal act in and of itself to uh, to um, to uh, have done, been done by the co-conspirator, you know, with the co-conspirator. So it has to be him and another person. So you'll see co-conspirator number one, co-conspirator number two, co-conspirator number three, or unindicted co-conspirator is what it will say. Oh, the defendant's co-conspirators. There you go. We actually do have the indictment. Yeah, there you go. Co-conspirator one. Co -con see, I haven't even seen the indictment and I'm telling you what it says because that's exactly what it would do. So these are going to be the facts that they're going to talk about regarding this charge. Uh, the other charge that um, he's charged with is 18 United States Code 1512 uh, and two separate subsections. Um, that is a scheme to obstruct, uh, I say, the counting of the presidential uh, electors on January 6th. Again, the pressure campaign against, uh, against Pence. And this one requires that you corruptly obstruct or impede or attempt uh, to obstruct an official proceeding, the, the official proceeding being the counting of the votes and certifying the election on January 6th. You have to act corruptly to be guilty of this crime. And Clearly, uh, the, the Trump here, um, you, they're going to prove that he was self-interested, right? He didn't have the best interest of the American people when he tried to steal the election. So I think that's going to be how they prove that he acted uh, corruptly. And then the final charge is 18 United States Code Section 241, uh, Conspiracy Against Rights. This is a... Um, a a Civil War era uh, statute that was enacted when KKK used to try to um, not allow, you know, to take away people's votes and, and disenfranchise Black people who had just gotten and earned the right to vote. And that's a charge here. Basically, it's unlawful for two or more people. It's a conspiracy also to threaten or intimidate a person in their free exercise or enjoyment of their rights. Uh, somebody acting under the color of law. What does that mean? So like a police officer or a government official, they're acting as if they're allowed to commit this, you know, to do the act, uh, which is what Trump was doing as president. Right. And so he. Um, he was, you know, interfering with the electors, putting in the fake slates of electors, et cetera. Um, what I find, um, and so, you know, take away people's right to vote, and that's what that charge is. What I find surprising in this, um, although it was expected because it wasn't in the target letter, what I find surprising here is that uh, Jack Smith stayed away from seditious conspiracy. Now, there was going to be a question of Will he charge either the Insurrection Act, which is 18 United States Code 2383, or Seditious Conspiracy, which is 18 United States Code 2384? Now, if you recall, the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys and Stuart Rhodes, et cetera, the guys who violently tried to overthrow the government, those guys were charged with, um, with seditious conspiracy, and that's they were convicted, and that's been upheld so far. The Insurrection Act has not been charged, uh, you know, I think ever or um, in a really, really long time, like, you know, since I think it was um, since the Civil War, it, it was it was the last time it was used. So many people didn't think that uh, Jack Smith would charge it here for the first time. But seditious conspiracy is something that they, the Justice Department has, has charged, um, has charged these other individuals who breached the Capitol and violently, you know, did what they did on January 6th. And look, there's a lot of evidence and, and we saw it during the select committee's uh, hearings. There's a lot of evidence to show that Donald Trump, you know, 
basically could also be charged with that. So I was hoping he would be. He was, you know, he's just as responsible, if not more than them, since they were doing it at his behest. But Jack Smith chose not to go there. So look, I'm talking about all of this. I haven't read the indictment. I'm just telling you what I think it would be. Um, ben, hopefully you'll send yep. it to me so I can read it. Oh, <laughs> and you, if there's any we're more. sending it to you. We're going to post it on, <laughs> let me go through point by point so people can see it. But for those joining a historic event just taking place. Donald Trump indicted again in Washington, D.C. for his criminal conduct relating to the 2020 election. Michael ben, Cohen, I'm going to get yeah. your reaction right sure. now. Sure. So the very first thing that I saw is on Fox News, on their digital. They then turned around and, um, Karen, I wanted to sort of put this in your lap. They make a statement that President Trump has always followed the law and the Constitution with advice from many highly accomplished attorneys. These un-American witch hunts will fail, and President Trump will be re-elected to the White House so he can save our country from the abuse, incompetence, and corruption that is running through the veins of our country at levels never seen before. The question, Karen, that I really have for you on this one, of course, knowing Donald as well as I do, he's already deflecting his responsibility or his accountability for the charges that you just enumerated in this indictment. He looks to me like he's going to try to shift the responsibility and the blame onto his highly competent, well-respected, overpaid by the fund, right, by the super PAC, uh, by the lawyers. How does that work in his favor? Yeah, so... so there's a defense called the advice of counsel defense, right? So, and we've had that in some, in prosecutions before where somebody commits a crime, but they say, look, you know, like a tax crime, for example, he says, look, I, I didn't mean to commit this crime. I went to a tax lawyer, the tax lawyer said I could do this. And, you know, if the tax lawyer in good faith thought that was the interpretation of the, if they thought that was the statute and gave that advice, that is okay, right? And so you won't be guilty because you didn't intend to commit the crime. You were acting on the advice of counsel. That is some what some people use, you know, as a shield. But you also, you know, and, and it works sometimes, but he's trying to use it, you know, as a sword, not just a shield, right? He's trying to say that, look, you know, uh, you know, I, he, he was given advice by multiple, multiple lawyers, including his attorney general, who conducted investigations into the voter fraud, including the 60 plus legal cases that he um, that he tried to bring but didn't rule in his favor. He was told by many lawyers in the Justice Department, uh, in the White House Counsel's Office, who said, you cannot do this. You cannot steal the election. You cannot put forth fake slates of electors. He didn't like that answer. So he kept looking for other lawyers who would uh, would basically go and say what he wanted to say. So they weren't giving him advice. He was looking for lawyers who would go along with what he said. Now he's going to say, well, John Eastman is the one who came up with this scheme and he's the one who gave me the advice. But a, a, a federal judge in California has already ruled that that the advice that John Eastman gave uh, regarding this whole scheme was actually a crime and it wasn't legitimate attorney client advice. Great and therefore, that's something called the crime fraud exception, which pierces the attorney client privilege. And that is uh, and that is not going to fly if that's his defense. But that clearly what they're setting up here is that was going to be his defense. That he's going to say, I, my Lord, you know, Rudy can I also Giuliani, yeah, yeah I also think, by the way, that the other than, uh, say, Eastman, uh, we're also looking at Rudy Colludi, drunken Giuliani, yeah. who I think will ultimately be one of several fall guys uh, in this specific journey. Uh, and as many times as I've tried to warn them <laughs> about, you know, how Donald is going to handle, you know, the indictment that would emanate from Jack Smith's investigation, uh, of this, it's always somebody else. And, you know, who knows whether or not Rudy has already spoken, whether or not he's provided any pertinent information to Jack Smith, which could be the basis of this indictment. 
Yeah, you're right. You're 100 percent right. It's all these lawyers he's going to try to hide behind and he's going to attempt to invoke this advice of counsel defense. And that's what he's setting up. I'm sure he'll come up with other defenses that he's going to try uh, to utilize here. But, you know, look, as I said, you can't seek out a lawyer who is willing to commit a crime with you and do something that is clearly not in keeping with any interpretation of the law, you know, it, it's, you can't hide behind that. You can't basically you and your lawyer get together and say, well, I'm a lawyer, so let's go rob a bank together. And I told you that it was OK. So, you know, you'll be OK with that. Right. It's you, that that's not OK. There has to be some good faith basis. Look, half his lawyers have been disbarred anyway because they give such terrible advice. And, you know, he like I said, he's gotten advice from so many lawyers about what the law actually is, but he didn't like it. And so he looked and sought out these lawyers. And I agree with you. Giuliani is definitely one of them. You know, he he said in, in a kind of an odd video that he was taping, uh, that he's not cooperating and he told the truth and there's no crime, et cetera. But I wonder whether he is cooperating, uh, but he's just saying that he's not along the, you know, there, there's, there's this weird playbook um, in Trump world that maybe uh, Michael, you can help explain where they will just say things that they want to be true that are a hundred percent false. And Rudy seems to be along those same lines. And I think a stark example of that is, you know, there are multiple people who are at a meeting that I'm sure is going to be in this um part of this indictment between Donald Trump and Mike Pence, where Mike, where Donald Trump asked Mike Pence, will you, you know, not certify the election? And uh, Mike Pence says, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't have the power to do it. And what does Donald Trump do? He goes out and tweets, Mike Pence is on board. Mike Pence is going to do this. And I look at that and I'm like, it's just an outright lie. Like, it's not even like a philosophical difference. It's not like, I believe in, you know, lower taxes. I believe in higher taxes, right? This is a, an outright lie. And they just say remember? things that are outright lies. And that's what, yeah. she, so anyway, I, I don't know if Rudy Giuliani is saying I'm not cooperating. I don't know if that's true or not. So do you remember during his administration when they were having the lie counter and after like 35,000 lies that Donald had told to the American people that they decided that they were going to just stop with it because it was so absurd. It was like six lies per day. So the fact that he is now lying about Mike Pence being on board or any of the other things, to me, it's not shocking. What Donald does is you know it's very Stalinistic, um, whereby if there if there's something that you want people to believe and you know it's a lie, the way that you get them to believe it is you repeat the lie over and over and over again, and then you get your surrogates to go on and to lie and to say the same misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, and you keep doing this over and over and over again until the lie becomes the truth. And Donald Trump has perfected that technique. He's just perfected it. He manages to have enough people, whether it's because of his relationship to folks like a Sean Hannity or in the past Tucker Carlson or any of the other hosts of whether it's Fox, Newsmax or whatnot, Right. They would go out. They would regurgitate the lie again and again and again. And then they would get members of Congress to do the same thing. Ultimately, again, the lie becomes the truth. And that's Donald Trump's superpower. I want to say this. We are number one on all of YouTube in the world across all genres, all news networks right now. Thanks to the Brigade. Thanks to the Midas Mighty. I want to bring on to this superstar panel, Michael Popa, co-host of Legal AF. We're bringing the whole network together. We got Michael Cohen, Karen Friedman Agnifilo, Michael Popak, the gang is here. Michael Popak, I want to get your <laughs> I want to get your reaction, Michael Popak, to what we are learning right now. Yeah, and you can hear me in the back. I'm sort of printing out the 45-page indictment. Karen Friedman Ignifilo, our colleague, was dead right when she said last week that the most perfect indictment she could envision would be a very simple indictment, one defendant, Donald Trump and a small set of counts where you can't get any smaller than the four counts or so of this present indictment. 
And while there is a list of other co-conspirators, six in total, <clears throat> Karen was so right about Jack Smith putting together in an elegant fashion an indictment that is both sweeping in its approach, yet surgical in its attack, um, and doesn't delay justice. He'll add other people. There is no doubt that one or more of the six co-conspirators that's unindicted for now will be indicted before things are over, but not now. That's for a different time and a different place. Let's get a surrender arraignment of Donald Trump. Uh, to keep, I know every, you, you've already started the conversation, so let me contribute on the co-conspirator part. Co-conspirator number one is an attorney, it's Rudy Giuliani. Co-conspirator number two is an attorney, it's John Eastman. Co-conspirator number three is an attorney, it's Sidney Powell. Co-conspirator number four, a Department of Justice official, is Jeffrey Clark. Co-conspirator number five, I want to hear from Ben, I think it may be Ken Cheeseborough, and co-conspirator number six could be a political operative for the fake electors, which I think is Peter Navarro. Um, I'm open I'm open to other comments on five and six. I think I'm dead right on one through four. And then from there, having now laid out the cast of characters in this sordid play, Jack Smith then goes in a speaking indictment to talk about, well, what was the, uh, the, the multiple conspiracies of which he says there are four conspiracies all led by one Donald Trump to attack the function of the federal government in the counting and proper certification of a presidential election. Particularly, particularly he led off right where we think he should have with attacking any argument by Donald Trump that he lacked criminal intent or mens rea. Look, Jack Smith's no dummy. He knows that Donald Trump has been floating the, I just relied on attorneys. He started it with Michael Cohen, our colleague here, uh, about what happened with Stormy Daniels, relied on Michael Cohen. And you see Stephen Chung and all the rest have been trying to float in the last couple of days. Many, many attorneys Donald Trump relied on. Many, many attorneys, because he's going to try for this sort of sort of narrow defense of, I relied on attorneys and hope that a judge or jury buys it. Of course, indicting the future attorneys kind of plays into their hand. But the mens rea attack, I thought, was brilliant in the indictment, particularly um, Jack Smith said that the president, former President Trump, was notified repeatedly that the lie was a lie, that he lost the election. And then they list in the indictment all the people that told Donald Trump and any reasonable person that he lost the election. It's, he, it says it starts with the vice president. Pence told him. Senior leadership of the Department of Justice told him. That would have been Bill Barr, Jeff Rosen, Richard Donahue. His, his national intelligence director told him. His cybersecurity head, Chris Krebs, told him. Um, uh, his senior elected officials in other states told him. Members of the state legislature on the GOP told him. Federal and state judges told him. And his own in-house counsel, general counsel or White House counsel, that would have been Pat Cipollone and Eric Hirschman, told him. And therefore, you cannot continue to maintain um, the, the fallacy that I didn't know, nobody told me, when you have a list like that of so many people. And then lastly, for my initial comments, as this printer is still printing the indictment, is uh, Jack Smith was also smart to anticipate arguments by Donald Trump. He said, it is okay at the top of the indictment. It is okay to use lawful means to object if you're the loser of an election. It's okay to say, with proper First Amendment rights to go use the legal system properly, to object, to use an audit process properly, to do all the things you're allowed to do under our system of election law. It is not okay to enter into a, a criminal conspiracy to misuse all of those things, to weaponize the Department of Justice, to create fake electors, to deny everything that's happening before your very eyes, despite the weight of the evidence by people in senior leadership around you. That is not okay. Let's take a look at the room where special counsel 
Jack Smith is expected to be giving a press conference shortly. Salty, if we can pull that up when you have a moment and see the crowd starting to come into that room. Look, I assume that we'll know this is ready to go when everybody takes their chairs. There's still some empty chairs. That's going to be a packed house. I could kind of guarantee you of that. Uh, Popak, I agree with your list right there. I like this four boxes of the crew right <laughs> here. Um, I agree with who you have as even one through six, it's including like Chesbro as five and though, six as Navarro. But we will, um, I'd love to hear from the uh, Midas Mighty, the Legal AFers, and the Brigaders in the YouTube chat below if they believe that those co-conspirators, for now unindicted co-conspirators who may be receiving or have already received target letters, who those individuals are. Karen Freeman, Agnifilo, as we go back to you, and then we'll hear from Cohen, any additional reflections that you have on this historic news that Donald Trump has been indicted this time in Washington, D.C. for his conduct regarding the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection. I think, look, we got to see now who the judge is going to be, right? And uh, how, how that will, you know, this is going to be an indictment in Washington. This is an indictment in Washington, D.C., so it's going to be a judge in D.C. And let's see, you know, whether we can get this. And Karen, trial. I want to interrupt you right there. I hate to interrupt you, but I want to say we do know who the judge is right now. Judge Chutkin, we believe to be presiding over this case in D.C., a Barack Obama appointee oh, federal there's judge. there's a God in heaven. Federal Judge Chutkin. So pretty much the exact opposite of Judge Eileen Cannon. We see the initials on the filing, and that's how we're able to surmise. That's what everyone is reporting. That's who I believe it to be. Sorry to interrupt you, Karen, but I did no, want to mention great. Judge <laughs> Chutkin. No, that's fantastic. So look, I think we're I think Jack Smith is going to focus on the clear what's very clear about this is this is the case he's going to try to get to trial before the election. And he will he needed to get this out there before Fonnie Willis brings her case. And that's going to be in the coming weeks. Right. Hers, I think, is going to be the sweeping indictment with a thousand counts and a million defendants and, you know, big sweeping RICO conspiracy, which is the other way this can be done. And, and that is an important case to bring to. Uh, and, and hopefully what will happen is she'll get a, a trial there and a conviction. It will not happen before the election because it'll be so big and, and Jack Smith's going to want to go first. But don't forget, hers will be pardon proof because it's in the state. Right. And, and the, the um if, if Donald Trump wins or anybody wins, right, they can't pardon him or uh, or stop that investigation. So I think it's I think um, this is the case that that Jack Smith is going to push to trial. You know, look, he superseded Mar-a-Lago when he saw that Eileen Cannon wasn't going to have that one go in December, uh, which is what Jack Smith asked for. And she put it over until May 2024. And so, look, that that case probably won't go before the election because and that's why he superseded and added more counts in another defendant. It's like, OK, that's we're just not going to get that one done. But he made this one streamlined, short, sweet, just a few charges. He, he put all the issues in there that that um, addressing what the potential defenses are going to be to diffuse them. And hopefully Judge Chutkin will will push this case to, to trial. One more thing. This case does not have classified documents like the Mar-a-Lago case. So there's no top secret clearance that they need. They don't have to have a secured, uh, you know, the skiff where you can, where you look at those documents. They don't have to, you know, have a SEPA, the Classified Information Procedures Act hearing. You know, those are all things that delay a case, right? It's very complicated. This is a simple case, streamlined case. And so this case will go to trial before the election. Uh, and that's what Jack Smith's goal was. The only other case that might go to trial before the election, I think, is your case, Michael Cohen, with uh, Alvin. Uh, we're going to bring so you I the think... press conference of special. <laughs> this is the press conference of special counsel Jack Smith when that goes live uh, in a few moments. Want to show you right now some of the responses by MAGA Republicans. Uh, this is Marjorie Taylor Greene responding to the news, and then Michael Cohen. I want to get your reaction to what Marjorie Taylor Greene has to say. Play the clip. Going to be soon indicting. President Trump in Washington, D.C., and it's it's going to be something like we've never seen before. Um, I think it's going to truly put not only President Trump and his his family, 
Um, all of his staff uh, put them to a test they've never been tested on, but it's also going to test our nation. And I, it's something that I've prayed about a lot, and I'm, I, it's just sad to me. Um, Jack Smith, he's a terrible attorney. He, he has a lot of failures in his career, but he is abusing his power, the power of the special counsel and the Department of Justice. And he. Cohen, I want to get your response in just a moment. I want to remind everybody that we've just launched MidasTouch.com. If you want to follow along with the full indictment, if you want to follow along and read it for yourself, we just launched MidasTouch.com. It has breaking news stories. It's going to be one of the top destinations in the world. I think the top for pro-democracy news, but it's a way when we talk about documents, you can follow along with what we are saying. So go to MidasTouch.com. We just posted the story. We posted the full indictment. Read along with us while we talk about it. Now your reaction, Michael Cohen. So one of the things that I often say is that the only way to shut somebody like Marjorie Toilet Green up is not to give her the oxygen that she so desperately craves. Why are we even putting her on? There's nothing that she says that is truthful. So why are we helping to promote the lies? Now, of course, we do need to understand that this is happening on the other side. But when Marjorie Taylor Greene turns around and starts talking about Jack Smith is a terrible lawyer, really? Really? Why don't you tell me one lawyer that Donald has right now in his crew that holds a candle to Jack Smith? She's only angry at him because Donald is angry at him because they're holding Donald accountable for his own actions. She Listen, if he would have turned around and said that there is no indictment, we didn't find enough evidence in order to, you know, to bring forth the case, she would be praising him as the smartest attorney that ever existed. So there is no truth. And what we need to do is we need to stop giving these lying pieces of shit. We need to stop giving them oxygen to promote their lies. Let them do it on Newsmax, on OAN, or even Fox right now is not putting up with the lies that they they curb them every single time that they start. So, you know, we are making a dent in stopping it, but she is one of the most despicable, despicable members of Congress that exists. And it's again why I keep saying to our brigaders, when we get together for the rally, and I hope everybody's going to be there, one of the things that we want to do is ensure that our brigade is so large and our and our position is so strong that we're successful in ensuring that people like Marjorie Toilet Green, people like the Matt Gaetzes, the Josh Hawleys, the Ted Cruz's and so on, the Lindsey Grahams, that they get voted out of office because they are doing nothing to promote democracy. All that they're doing is looking to, you know, to kiss Donald's ass so that when it be when our country becomes an autocracy, that they are one of the commanders, like in the television show, The Handmaid's Tale. That's all that they're looking for is power and money for themselves. Let me tell you all, I'm going to go to you, Karen, in just a moment. So the judge who's been assigned to this case, Judge Tanya Chutkin, an Obama appointee, the only federal judge in Washington, D.C., who has sentenced January 6 defendants to sentences longer than the government had requested. Just some background on Judge Chutkin. She's a Jamaican-American lawyer born in Kingston. Uh, she's a graduate of George Washington Law. I went to George Washington undergrad. She went to Penn undergrad, a lawyer at Hogan and Donovan, a public defender, a partner at Boys Schiller. Her husband was a D.C. Superior Court judge. Just want to give everyone the background of the judge who's been assigned. Let me just emphasize again, an Obama appointee. So this is a pro-democracy judge here. Karen Friedman Agnifilo, I know that you've got a very busy schedule ahead of you and we appreciate you sharing your thoughts first here on the Midas Touch Network. I know you're very sought after right now, um, but please, if you can, give us some of your thoughts, and then we'll go to Michael Popak, who's been anxiously waiting right here 
He's got his notes. He's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, look, you know, Jack Smith is a highly respected attorney that has been a lifelong public servant and career prosecutor. He started at the Manhattan DA's office in 1994 with me and we worked in the same small group and he was trained with the highest ethics. He's an excellent lawyer. He left and went to the Department of Justice where he worked his way up and became, uh, you know, a, a AUSA and then a U.S. attorney down in, in Tennessee. And then he went to The Hague to prosecute war times. I mean, war crimes. And, you know, look, this is I, I couldn't tell you if he's a Democrat or a Republican. Politics has never played any part in his life or in his consciousness. He's all about ethics, public service, and doing the right thing. He's you know, never gone out for the money or the glory or the fame. You know, this is really, truly just a guy who's trying to do the right thing. And so, you know, for Marjorie Taylor Greene to say the things he's saying and Donald Trump to call him a crackhead, it's just, you know, absolutely um, baseless and outrageous. He's, he's uh, truly a public servant in the, in, in the best way, uh, in the best in the best tradition. So um, those are those are my final parting words on on Jack Smith and, and this indictment. I, I was just looking up at, at, at a television because it looks like the press conference is, is is going to happen soon. Someone appeared at the podium. There he is. <laughs> let's um, let's turn on let's turn on the volume as well. Um, see if we can we we can hear salty what's going on. There. Um, there's okay. I can confirm that in the feed. Um, we will be, you know, th there is sound. It's just right now, you know, there it's, it's a two minute warning. So what I suggest we do is let's keep it here. There's a two minute warning. I want to bring you the moment special counsel Jack Smith does come on screen. Um, you know, we will be reading through the indictment. So here is what I suggest that we do right now. I I'm going to read one portion of the indictment that's getting a lot of attention. Salty, I want you to turn on the sound as soon as C-SPAN has its sound on as well from this press conference. Um, there is a line in this indictment as we comb through it where um, Trump told Pence on January 1st, quote, you're too honest. And again, make sure you go to MidasTouch.com. You can follow along with what's uh, going on here um, with the complaint, the indictment rather. We have it posted on our new website, MidasTouch.com. Follow along with the indictment. Um, and here's the allegation in the uh, indictment. On January 1st, the defendant, Trump, called the vice president and berated him because he had learned that the vice president had opposed a lawsuit seeking a judicial decision that at the certification, the vice president had the authority to reject or return votes to the state under the Constitution. The vice president responded that he thought there was no constitutional basis for such authority and that it was improper. In response, the defendant told the vice president, quote, you're Jack Smith too is honest. walking in. Let's play it. Good evening. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. The indictment was issued by a grand jury of citizens here in the District of Columbia, and it sets forth the crimes charged in detail. I encourage everyone to read it in full. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the US government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the US Capitol on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots and they are the very best of us. They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it. 
they put their lives in the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people. They defended the very institutions and principles that define the United States. Since the attack on our capital, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. This case is brought consistent with that commitment and our investigation of other individuals continues. In this case, my office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. In the meantime, I must emphasize that the indictment is only an allegation and that the defendant must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. I would like to thank the members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation who are working on this investigation with my office, as well as the many career prosecutors and law enforcement agents from around the country who have worked on previous January 6th investigations. These women and men are public servants of the very highest order, and it is a privilege to work alongside them. Thank you. Why didn't you charge any of the other co Folks, that's special counsel Jack Smith holding a press conference, a historic day indeed. And special counsel Jack Smith informed everybody that they should go and read the indictment for themselves. And you can read the full indictment at MidasTouch.com. We just launched the new MidasTouch.com website. We've posted the indictment as we talk about it here over the next few hours and we break it down. You could read along for yourself. The MidasTouch.com new website is going to be the number one source of pro-democracy news. I want to get everybody's reaction from Karen Friedman Agnifilo to Michael Cohen to Michael Popak, who's been waiting anxiously the whole crew here. Karen Friedman Agnifilo, I know you've got to go soon, so I want to throw it to you first before you leave. Cohen and Popak are patiently waiting here as well, but I got to get your reaction, Karen Friedman Agnifilo. Yeah, I mean, look, he had to make a statement, right, Jack Smith, because Donald Trump is now going to start his misinformation campaign the way he does, and he's going to try to spin it how he spins it. And so Jack Smith wanted to tell us all what this is and what this isn't, right? And he, he basically, um, I think, summarized it perfectly. I got the chills when he said, you know, the thing about the men and women, uh, the heroes who were not just defending the building and the people, but our institutions uh, and and our democracy and just our very being as a country, because that is true. That is what this doc, the, what this indictment is about. It's not about the four charges uh, or the, the technical elements of the crime. The reason this is uh, this is so serious, you know, Donald Trump tries to make false equivalency with with, you know, whether it's Hillary Tw Clinton and her emails or Pence and Biden, they had classified documents too, or Hunter Biden or Joe Biden. You know, he tries to make these false equivalencies like, you know, they're just, this is a witch hunt and people are just coming after me. There is no equivalency between, even if those individuals technically committed, which they did not, uh, crimes, although whatever, you know, that's just not equivalent to trying to literally rip up our constitution and take away our democracy and who we are as a country, because that's what Donald Trump did, right? That's what he was trying to do here. And so I think just reminding everybody that that's really what this is about and that that the law enforcement who defended the Capitol that day, that's what they were defending as much as they were defending the individuals there or the building. They were really trying to defend our country uh, as a democracy and what our beliefs are. So I thought that was beautifully said. And I'm just so proud that that this indictment has been brought. And, you know, Jack Smith asked for a speedy trial to try to get this to, I mean, like he, he wants a trial up, uh, before before the election, and this is the one he's going to push, and he's and hopefully Judge uh, Chutkin, who seems to be um, an excellent judge, will will do that. So hopefully we'll get a trial before the election. That's this is just a great day. Ben, I think you're muted. Ben, ben you're on, on mute. So anyway, you know one of the things, like Karen, like you said, I agree. I mean, it was short. It was concise. It was brilliantly said. 
But the part that, like you, that really touched me, I've had on my podcast all the brigaders that also follow uh, me, uh, my Just Touch Network, with, uh, as well with um, uh, the Maya Culpa podcast. We're actually number 37 in the top shows, and we've always remained a top you know, podcast. I've had Harry Dunn um, on the on the epi, you know on the one of the segments, and I can only say that he really takes your breath away when they speak about the trauma that they experienced in protecting uh, the people's house and protecting American democracy. So kudos to Jack Smith for acknowledging that. The one thing that we have to remember: yes, there is an indictment out. And one of the things Jack Smith also said is that there is a presumption of innocence right now. Now, I know that so many of us are sitting there and saying, innocence, my ass. All right. At the end of the day, we all know what Donald was up to. We all know what you know, he was trying to accomplish, right? The destruction of our democracy for an autocracy where he is the king, the supreme leader, the monarch, the ruler, the Fuhrer. But you actually need a jury to come back with that determination. And rest assured, you know, if Jack Smith handles this case the way he just handled that press conference, the way he's handled this indictment from inception to indictment, rest assured, I think that we're going to get the response that's going to hold Donald Trump uh, accountable for his improper behavior. Michael Popak, I want to get your reaction now want to tell everybody too we are now number one in youtube in the entire world across all genres across news this show is number one thanks to the brigaders the legal efforts the midas mighty out there you can read the full you indictment forgot the, you at forgot the mea culpa fanatics the mea culpa fanatics you can read the full indictment at midastouch.com the new website launched by the midas touch network it's posted there right now um, oh and make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel this is the fastest growing media channel right now in the world period and it's great that it's pro-democracy content so if you're not su subscribed make sure you are subscribed michael popak you've been waiting more patiently than i've ever seen you wait before what are <laughs> what what are your thoughts when you were mute i should have jumped in <laughs> um look look we're unpacking a, a, a 45 page indictment but the, some of the things that I was able to do while while we were while we were here, kind of talking about it, listening to Jack Smith intently, and I want to put a little meat on the bones of what we're talking about, and we'll do it more on the different podcasts on the Midas Touch Network. Karen and I will do it tomorrow during the midweek edition of Legal AF. You and I'll do it on Saturday during the Saturday edition of Legal AF, and then we'll jump in with hot takes here and there to unpack different parts of this real estate that is the indictment. But but. It is beautiful in its simplicity. There are, as we expected from a week or two ago, four counts. There could have been a hundred counts. There could have been a thousand counts. So it's not an accident. It is by prosecutorial expertise by Jack Smith that there are four counts. And he was able to fit, you know, a hundred pounds of potatoes into a five pound sack so eloqu eloquently, elegantly. Count one, conspiracy to defraud the United States. Count two, another conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. We know what that is. That's the Jan 6 certification. Count three, obstruction of and an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. And then the, and then the third conspiracy listed here, conspiracy against rights. That's the section 241. I did a hot take on it, came out of the civil rights. It's a, a era, this, uh, came out of the um, reconstruction era uh, of our nation when the Ku Klux Klan was stopping freed black slaves, now freed citizens from, from voting. It has to do with vote fraud, and like the fake electors. And then you've got not six indicted conspirators, but six un currently unindicted co-conspirators. Because as we said in prior podcasts, Ben, this is where Jack Smith now has another meeting tomorrow with Rudy Giuliani's lawyers, Sidney Powell's lawyers, John Eastman's lawyers, Ken Cheeseborough's lawyers, Peter Navarro's lawyers, and say, we had another draft of this that had your name in it. Currently, you're an unindicted co-conspirator. You want to keep rolling the dice and playing Russian roulette, or do you want to flip? 
It's up to you. We don't care. But the next superseding indictment, and you saw what we did last week in Mar-a-Lago, is going to have your name written on it above the caption, above the line in the caption, because you're going to be a defendant. And this is how Donald, this is how Jack Smith is going to squeeze, just as he did in Mar-a-Lago, got a few insiders to flip on Donald Trump to come up with that superseding indictment. Let's talk about Tanya Chutkin for a minute. You, I don't know if you remember this, Ben, but we when the Jan 6 sentencings first started happening, the first several were in front of Tanya Chutkin. And we liked her approach so much that you and I called her, at least I did, hang, hang him high Chutkin. And if this is now the person, because she gave out such, you know, Department of Justice asked for X, she gave like X plus 10, 10 years. You know, so she threw the book literally at the, Jan Jan Six, at the Jan 6 defendants. And so if you could think of one person that Donald Trump um, would not want to see the the wheel, uh, the random wheel spin and land on for a judge. It would be Obama appointee, Jamaican American, Tanya Chutkin, who already denied his attempt to stop his tax returns from being turned over to the House Select Committee, which was affirmed by the Supreme Court ultimately. So they like her. And she's she knows everything she needs to know about the Jan 6. Now, lastly, we're not going to be able on this, of course, on this live uh, live show to read every paragraph of this indictment. But let me, there's 128 of them. But let me just give, it's been two minutes to give the headers because the headers alone, like a like chapters in a book, tell the story. Here's, I'm just going to read five or six headers. Uh, the defendant, every time I say defendant, that's Donald Trump. Trump's use of deceit to get officials to subvert the illegitimate election results and change electoral votes. We know what that is. Next. And then he goes on in every state, all the battleground states, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and the like, to talk about what happened there. Next header. The defendant's use of dishonesty, fraud, and deceit to organize fraudulent slates of electors and cause them to transmit false certificates to Congress. And then he goes in, in detail, paragraph after paragraph, including all the co-conspirators and their role. The defendant's attempt to leverage the Justice Department to use deceit to get state officials to replace legitimate electors and electoral votes with the defendants. That's Jeffrey Clark in the weaponization of the Department of Justice in the waning days of his administration. The defendant's attempts to enlist the vice president to fraudulently alter the election results at the Jan 6th certification proceeding. That's the pressure campaign on Mike Pence, concocted by Eastman and Trump. And then others tried to tried to do it. And then and then finally, in the last major header, the defendant's exploitation of the violence and chaos at the Capitol. When all else fails, let's roll out a good old fashioned insurrection to attack the seat of our democracy. That it that that's the indictment in seven chapters or less that we'll be unpacking over the next week or two. And when you mention Tanya Chutkin, you're referring to federal judge Tanya Chutkin, who has been assigned to this case, the exact opposite of Judge Eileen Cannon. Michael Cohen, as yeah, you're learning so, more, you know, Ben, before we're learning more about it, the indictment. Yeah, but before we jump into that, Mike, you know, one of the things that we also have to remember is I don't want to see the judge, you know, acting in any way, which she will not. Right. She's not Eileen Cannon acting in a way where Trump can now turn around and make allegations that this is partisan. Right. That takes away from the seriousness of the document that you just so eloquently read from. Uh, my goal, my hope is that whatever it is that he did. Rest assured, Jack Smith will be able to no different than the Alvin Bragg case and being as close to it as I am. They will be using testimony from others. They will be using documentary evidence within which to put on the case and to prove the truth of the allegations that are raised. Plain and simple. She's just a no-nonsense judge. She's not going to put up with the bullshit that Eileen Cannon is. I say, oh, yeah, yeah, let's kick it off for another three, four months or entertain the frivolous motions that he has his lawyers do. She's not going to accept that any more than the judge in the case against me, the civil case that Trump brought down in the Southern District of Miami. He's not going to accept it either. So fortunately, 
the wheel spun correctly, not correctly for Donald, but correctly for democracy. Totally. Law and order judge all the way. Um, let's take a look at some of the paragraphs that uh, we're learning about in Popak. You highlighted these. You could read along, by the way, everybody watching this by going to Midas Touch. Dot com. That is the new website launched by the Midas Touch Network. There's thousands of people who are there live right now following along as we read this. But this is a, I think, very, very powerful paragraph from uh, the indictment. And it talks about how on January 1st, the defendant, Trump, called the vice president and berated him because he had learned that Vice President Pence had opposed a lawsuit seeking a judicial decision that at the certification, the vice president had the authority to reject or return votes to the states under the Constitution. The vice president responded that he thought there was no constitutional basis for such authority and that it was improper. In response, the defendant Donald Trump told former Vice President Pence, quote, you're too honest. Within hours of the conversation, the defendant Trump reminded his supporters to meet in Washington before the certification proceeding, tweeting, the big protest rally in Washington, D.C. will take place at 11 a.m. on January 6th. Locational details to follow Stop the Steel Cohen. What that goes to, in my view, is intent right here that Donald Trump knew Donald Trump was telling Pence, you are being too honest. And you know where that testimony almost certainly came from? Pence. Pence spoke before the grand jury, and that's something that Pence and others in the room would have confirmed to the grand jury that just returned this indictment. So that is going to be, and Pence is going to be a fact witness in this case. He already is a fact witness. But think about it, the historic nature of this indictment, but within the indictment, you've got a former vice president providing key testimony against Donald Trump. Your thoughts, Michael Cohen? Well, it could also be Mark Meadows. It could also be, you know, uh, Ivanka or Jared. It could be anyone that was in the room at the time that he was engaging in the conversation. Um, rest assured, again, this is how much confidence that I have in Jack Smith. And based upon the indictment, you can see why we all should have a lot of faith and a lot of confidence in him. Because what will... What will ultimately be demonstrated at trial is a plethora of individuals that will be paraded to the stand in order to give testimony regarding Donald Trump's intent. Now, I want to be very clear again, something Jack Smith said, which is he's innocent until proven guilty. That is a tenant of our law. Unless, of course, you're Michael Cohen, right? And you have a Donald Trump administration with a Bill Barr as your attorney general, right? That's a whole nother story. But here, Donald is presumed innocent. Um, what we're going to see is a multitude of people paraded out to testify exactly Donald Trump's intent. But like I said earlier, one of the things that Donald is going to do, and he does it all the time. He's going to look to find who the scapegoat could be. He's going to try to argue, or at least his counsel will, that he relied upon legal advice. And therefore, he did not have the intent to commit a crime or to break the law. Now we get to, obviously, Jack Smith, and we get to additional testimony, additional documents that will ultimately refute it, or the goal, of course, would be to refute it. And this is the way I see this case um, ultimately panning out. Michael Popak, your thoughts as we learn more, a statement also being issued by Donald Trump, the Trump campaign. I don't know. Is this the PAC that paid the $40 million to cover the legal defense? I mean, who's even issuing this statement? They're all, but they're all financially and morally bankrupt, including <laughs> mentioning, and I take personal offense to the mentioning of Nazi Germany in the 1930s because Donald Trump got indicted for bad misconduct, criminal misconduct that he did before he was in office, while he ran for office, while he was in office, and after he left office. I mean, the fact that he blames everyone but himself and wants, personal ex wants a personal exception and a pass because he's also a candidate 
for office, which of course is a, a, mani a maniacal attempt by him to avoid responsibility and to ultimately try to win this thing to pardon himself for the federal counts. I mean, but but to blame Joe Biden. And Popak, before yeah, though sure. getting your reaction, let me just read it to the yeah, brigaders sure. who right, hasn't okay. seen this statement yeah. first. And I know you've read it. Um, yeah. This is what it says. This is nothing more than the latest corrupt chapter in the continued pathetic attempt by the Biden crime family and their weaponized Department of Justice to interfere with the 2024 presidential election in which. President Trump is the undisputed front runner and leading by substantial margins. But why did they wait two and a half years to bring these fake charges right in the middle of President Trump's winning campaign for 2024? Why was it announced the day after the big, crooked Joe Biden scandal broke out from the halls of Congress? It's even hard to read this, Popak, because it's so deranged. The answer is election interference. The lawlessness of these persecutions of President Trump and his supporters is reminiscent of Nazi Germany in the 1930s, the former Soviet Union and other authoritarian dictatorial regimes. President Trump has always followed the law and the Constitution with advice from many highly accomplished attorneys. These un-American witch hunts will fail and President Trump will be reelected to the White House so he can save our country from the abuse, incompetence and corruption that is running through the veins of our country at levels never seen before. Three years ago, we had strong borders, energy independence, no inflation and a great economy. Today, we are a nation in decline. President Trump will not be deterred by disgraceful and unprecedented political targeting. It's all projected projection and confession um, and calling himself president. I was just reading the statement. I want you to break it down, Popak, though now, yeah. because this is a horrific, disgusting statement by a traitor and a criminal in Donald Trump. And for those tuning into the Midas Touch Network, that's what we call him, a traitor and a criminal. We don't sugarcoat it here. He is a fascist criminal traitor. Michael Popak. Yeah, we don't blow smoke or sunshine on the network or in any of our individual podcasts or when we're lucky enough to get together on a momentous and historic day like this one when a former president is now indicted for the third time for only one reason, because... He committed criminal acts, as alleged, presumed innocent, um, but he has no one to blame for himself but, but himself. And he already started this earlier today and in the weeks preceding this mantra of why didn't they indict me two and a half years ago? Uh, well, I don't think you understand how criminal investigations work. You mean, why didn't why didn't Jack Smith indict you before he was even appointed nine months ago? Why didn't Merrick Garland I mean, uh, when? On uh, Jan 7 of 2020, that's when you were supposed to be indicted? It takes, it takes a minute to develop a criminal case and to have every one of your lawyers, I'm talking to Donald Trump now, have every one of your lawyers turn on you either voluntarily or have your attorney-client privilege stripped away because at least three federal judges have said that you are, there's more likely than not that you committed a crime or fraud related to various aspects of how you interacted with the, the justice system. And so it takes, it takes a minute to get your former vice president to testify against you and have his immunity stripped away. It takes a minute to have all of your uh, lawyers and co-conspirator cell phones and text messages and WhatsApp messages picked up and reviewed and analyzed. It takes a minute to go to each of the seven battleground states and to get all the fake electors to either cooperate with you or to obtain their cell phone records um, and their emails and interviews and state legislators. I mean, all of this takes an incredible amount of time in order not just to get an indictment. That is not Jack Smith's goal. Jack Smith's goal is not to walk out with an indictment. If that were his goal, he could have gotten this indictment or something close to it several months ago. His goal is to win a conviction of Donald Trump because he's going to back up the equivalent of two tractor trailers worth of documents, you know, 100 terabytes of information. And he's going to dump it on Donald Trump and his defendants because he's ready for trial, because that's what he was waiting for, just as we're waiting for Fawny Willis to do the same thing in about two or three weeks. And for Donald Trump to say that there is a mass, that doesn't this sound familiar, there is a mass conspiracy against him led by Joe Biden that stitches together get this list from an earlier social media posting by Donald Trump, Letitia James, Fawny Willis, Jack Smith, and Alvin Bragg are all working together in a conspiracy 
Okay, I guess it's like this is the black helicopter thing, you know, that that he he plays into the conspiracy theory of America that led to the big lie that led to the entire thing. And they're all working against him without any proof or evidence. Donald, take some lawyers and podcasters, and we haven't even gotten through the indictment yet. I can't imagine that you, with your kind of learning disabilities, has gotten through the indictment yet. Take a minute. Let your lawyers, you got a couple of them, let let uh, Todd Blanche and let John Loro read it and let them come back and tell you how big of a mess that you're in, because it doesn't, it's not just words on a piece of paper. Every fact that is alleged in this indictment. Every one of them is backed by a number of either cooperating witnesses or ones that information was pulled out of them in a root canal in front of a grand jury or backed by a document or a text or all of that for every fact in there. Okay, this isn't like a reporter who needs two corroborating sources to say, you know, you wore a blue tie one day. This is a fact based intensive uh that is and every fact in here he's got a a truckload of information and in and either insiders outsiders or otherwise cooperating with him to establish it and so all this stuff this this campaign that got launched this morning by donald trump and all of his henchmen and all the talking points that we're seeing now all in coordinated effort blame the attorneys let's blame giuliani powell and eastman they're the bad guy they misled Donald Trump. Donald Trump wasn't the center of the conspiracy. They were. Okay, that's already started. And, you, and you're going to see, I mean, Midas Touch, I'm sure, will generate the talking points, the palm cards that each of these people that are, that are representatives, proxies for Donald Trump, are going to be using. And we can then line them up in video after video, and they will be almost identical. And the, and the other thing that will be true is none of this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this as a 32-year practicing a lawyer, trial lawyer in courtrooms like the ones that we're talking about, none of this is going to work in front of a judge in a black robe when the wooden door shuts and the lawyers get into that well of that courtroom. None of these defenses are going to work ultimately if this is his best set of defenses. And you can see the fire hose of evidence that is coming out at Donald Trump. This is the tip of the iceberg. This isn't everything that that Jack Smith has. This is all that he's cared to share at this moment in the indictment. The trial is going to be multiples of this in terms of evidence and information. And 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 lastly, woe be these co-conspirators who don't find God and don't come forward and tell the truth to Jack Smith because their name is going to be on the next indictment. And I'm talking to you, Rudy Giuliani. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, John Eastman. And I'm certainly talking to you, Sidney Powell. Moments ago, special counsel Jack Smith gave a press conference making the historic announcement that Donald Trump has been indicted again in connection with Trump's attempt to overthrow the 2020 election. For those just tuning in, we're going to show you the press conference that just took place that uh, special counsel Jack Smith made this historic announcement. And I wanted to point out as well that the judge assigned to this case is federal judge Tanya Chutkin, who is an Obama appointee. That is the judge who has been assigned to this matter. If you want to follow along with the indictment, go to the new Midas Touch website. That's MidasTouch.com, soon to be the number one pro-democracy website in the world. What we built on YouTube, we're now building on the web, and it's just going to be complementing our YouTube with like the actual documents that you could read along while we're doing these broadcasts. Let's play special counsel Jack Smith's press conference, and then let's hear from none other than Michael Cohen. Let's play this press conference. Good evening. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. The indictment was issued by a grand jury of citizens here in the District of Columbia, and it sets forth the crimes charged in detail. I encourage everyone to read it in full. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. 
lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the U.S. Capitol on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots and they are the very best of us. They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it. They put their lives in the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people. They defended the very institutions and principles that define the United States. Since the attack on our Capitol, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. This case is brought consistent with that commitment, and our investigation of other individuals continues. In this case, my office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. In the meantime, I must emphasize that the indictment is only an allegation and that the defendant must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. Michael Cohen, not just the host of Political Beatdown, but also the host of the Mea Culpa podcast here on the Midas Touch Network, also the author of Revenge, wherever books are sold, get your copy of Revenge, which really breaks down how Donald Trump weaponized the Justice Department against you and others. What is your reaction, though, when you see law and order actually in action right here? You know, I'd like to, at this point, time sort of parrot uh, Michael Fanon, who is a hero and should be considered a hero in everyone's heart. Uh, he, Harry Dunn, and all of the Capitol Police officers, not just the ones that have received notoriety, but all of them that defended the Capitol, that defended democracy. And it's something that I talk about in revenge. It's something obviously that Ben, you with the various different podcasts and, and Mike uh, on his and uh, me on mea culpa, we try to, we try to bring out because unfortunately the other networks that are out there, they don't invest enough time in terms of getting to the nitty gritty. And that's sort of what revenge does. It breaks down into how Donald Trump weaponized the United States Department of Justice. And instead in, instead of being a president for all, it was really to be a president for himself. What can he obtain from the presidency? Well, you know, we all know Jared got a couple billion dollars from the Saudis. Ivanka and Jared made over $600 million during that time. He ended up doing some business with the Saudis after he left office. You know, the, Ivanka also got a couple dozen uh, Chinese uh, patents uh, on our trademarks on her various different companies. I mean, this is all one big gigantic grift. And you know what? As Michael Fanon said, you know, I'd like to think that we played some small part in what's happening today. And I can tell you emphatically that he did, and you did, Ben, and Popic, you did. And I believe that I did as well. And I believe that all of those that follow us on our various different podcasts or read the books or follow us here on Political Beatdown, thanks to all of us, thanks to you, this is exactly what Donald is getting because enough of us have spoken up and enough of us have kept this thing alive. Because rest assured, one of the things that Donald wants to do is to put this thing to bed once and for all. And that will also be, since of course he lost out in the earlier stage, he'll try to do it by winning back the White House and think about it, pardoning himself from the federal crimes. Now, of course, I hear a lot of pundits talk about, well, yeah, but there's still Alvin Bragg's case. That's a state case. When Fonnie Willis brings the Fulton County, Georgia case, that will be also a state case. And he cannot pardon himself from a state case. Yeah, sure. Just imagine the marshals showing up to the White House or anywhere 
in order to take the president who is being protected by the Secret Service. You're going to end up in a massive battle between various different governmental agencies like this country has never, forget about experience before, has never contemplated before. This will create a constitutional crisis that none of us have ever anticipated and truthfully have no idea how it will ultimately resolve itself. Appreciate that commentary, Michael Cohen. Everybody can follow along with this indictment by going to MidasTouch.com. That's the new Midas Touch website. Everybody, make sure you're subscribed as well to our YouTube channel. This is currently number one most watched YouTube channel in the world across all genres, thanks to this unapologetically pro-democracy content right here and our great commentators like Michael Cohen, Michael Popak, Karen Friedman, Agnifilo. Let's just go through and two And you too, Ben. Ben, I don't forget it. about yourself. My, you know, my co-host in this political beatdown, all right? Though, <laughs> though, you know, you certainly have all the documents in front of you, and I'm loving the fact that you're taking the lead on it, but let's not Let's not forget about Ben and let's make sure that you smack that Ben Micellus emoji. I don't know. A lot of people complaining there's no Michael Cohen emoji. You and I can have a conversation after this, but let's all smack the Ben Micellus emoji because Ben, you did a great job in analyzing and breaking down and bringing us all together, you know, today on political beatdown so that we can give you the raw and the unfiltered facts, something that you don't get anywhere else. And it's exactly why right now we are number one. And you know what? We're going to continue to be number one with your help. And I am so excited and anxious to come up with the date with Ben, where we're going to have this rally, where we're all going to get together and make sure that our voices are heard, uh, not just in DC, but the press will be out there and rest assured our voices will be heard, not just here in this country, but around the world. So for that, I again, I am eternally grateful for everybody that follows me, um, you know, on social media, for all of you who have donated to the GoFundMe so that we can hold Donald accountable for that as well. The purchasing revenge and following me on Maya Culpa podcast, and most importantly, joining Ben and I in the political beatdown as the brigade, as we continue this journey of truth, raw, unfiltered truth. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Salty, a few points I want to make before we do our... Let's pull up this indictment that you can find at MidasTouch.com. Let's show the section where it deals with the co-conspirators. I'll, I'll hit 81 in just a moment. But if you go up in the complaint, you'll see where it talks about the um, six co-conspirators. We believe co-conspirator one, there you have it right there, to be Rudy Giuliani, co-conspirator two, to be John Eastman, both Trump lawyers. We believe co-conspirator three, and again, this is just based on the data that we're analyzing right now, to be Sidney Powell. Uh, we believe co-conspirator four to be Jeff Clark, who tried to become the acting uh, United States attorney. We believe five and six to be Ken Chesbrough and perhaps Peter Navarro. Um, but we are trying to confirm that as we speak, which brings me to paragraph 81. So when they're talking about co-conspirator four, that's Jeff Clark unindicted at this point, um, where it says on the afternoon of January three, co-conspirator four spoke with a deputy White House counsel. The previous month, the deputy White House counsel had informed defendant Trump that, quote, there is no world, there is no option in which you do not leave the White House on January 20th. Now, the same deputy White House counsel tried to dissuade co-conspirator for Jeff Clark from assuming the role of acting attorney general. The deputy White House counsel reiterated to co-conspirator for that there had not been outcome determinative fraud in the election and that if the defendant remained in office, nonetheless, there would be, quote, riots in every major city in the United States. Co-conspirator for responded, quote, well, Deputy White House Counsel, that's why there's an Insurrection Act. I want you to think about that. Here's another paragraph. I don't have the paragraph number yet, but this is the one that uh, Donald Trump told former Vice President Pence, you are too honest 
where it says on January 1, defendant Trump called the vice president and berated him because he had learned that the vice president had opposed a lawsuit seeking a judicial decision that at the certification, the vice president had the authority to reject or return votes to the states under the Constitution. Vice President Pence responded that he thought there was no constitutional basis for such authority and that it was improper. In response, defendant Trump told the vice president, quote, you're too honest. Within hours of the conversation, the defendant, Trump, reminded his supporters to meet in Washington before the certification proceeded, proceeding, tweeting, quote, the big protest rally in Washington, D.C. will take place at 11 a.m. on January 6th. Locational details to follow. Stop this deal. Just wanted to go show you how detailed this indictment is. Go to MidasTouch.com now. Read the full indictment, though. Read the full indictment. That's what special counsel Jack Smith also implored people to do. So you can see the level of detail here as well. I want to thank everybody for joining our coverage here on this historic episode of Political Beatdown. Uh, and in the second hour, we covered the breaking news that Donald Trump has been indicted again in connection with trying to overthrow the 2020 election. We played the press conference, historic press conference by special counsel Jack Smith. This historic day, we're honored that everybody shared this with us here, making the Midas Touch Network and Political Beatdown the number one most watched show on YouTube in the world, and I'm talking about ahead of all other news networks and all other genres. That is thanks to all of your support. Again, go to MidasTouch.com. Make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. If you want to get the Midas Touch gear, go to store dot Midas touch.com. We've got the best pro democracy gear, 100% union made, 100% made in the USA. That's store dot Midas touch. Dot com. Also, if you want to support the network, go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. You could become an honorary producer, as Cohen and I say, probably smarter business models out there because we don't have outside investors. But this is a this is a community, a pro-democracy community that's fueled by you. And that's how we've grown this brick by brick. And I was so uh, honored to announce here the new website, MidasTouch.com as well. Also get Cohen's new book, Revenge. It's wherever books are sold. Michael Cohen, Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics. Check out Michael Cohen's other podcast on the Midas Touch Network, the Mea Culpa podcast. Make sure you're subscribed to the Midas Touch podcast, Legal AF, Political Beatdown, wherever audio podcasts are available. And we're going to close this show out again at number one in the world. We're going to go through this indictment more. We'll have more breaking news stories here. Make sure you share the Midas Touch Network YouTube and the MidasTouch.com site with all friends, family, coworkers, colleagues, neighbors, whoever. Tell them about this pro-democracy community, unapologetically pro-democracy. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you, brigaders. Thank you, legal AFers. Thank you to all the Midas mighty out there who support this network. It's because of you. This is number one in the world. And it it is an honor for us to be a part of this pro-democracy community. Thank you so much. Finally, a community that's compassionate and intelligent and that truly, truly defends our Constitution. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on Thank Political Beatdown. Stay tuned for more breaking news here on the Midas Touch YouTube channel and a special shout out on this historic day to the Midas Mighty. Lock him up. Indictment season is upon us. Celebrate with the new indictment season t-shirt and v-neck exclusively at store.midastouch.com.